I've invited here today a rather special man. Some people would call this type of man a magician. He calls himself a mentalist. <laughs> um, Philip Cornwall is able to convince large rooms of people like yourselves that he is magic. And some people think he's a psychic. He's very, very clever in, in the way he does this. But Phil actually uses a range of very clever techniques, and he'll be the first person to tell you. He uses techniques to keep us thinking inside the box, inside the common ways of thinking, while he works right out there outside of the box. So I'm going to invite Philip up to the stage to show us a demonstration of how he does what he does and see if you can work out how he does it as he does it. Thanks, Phil. Thank you very much. The first thing to say is um, thanks ever so much for having me and I'm going to now generate a round of applause from you all. Thank you very much. I told you. It's magic. <laughs> Ah, uh, very clever, Phil. So, so you are not really a psychic, is that true? You're not really a magician, but you have a range of very clever techniques that you use. That's right. I, I um, arrive where I want to arrive at by using a, a variety of techniques. Um, NLP, the reading of body language, misdirection, showmanship, of course, and in the context of today, the very real power of suggestion. Okay. So now, you've brought with you a box that's very familiar in the magic world. <laughs> what is that box? And tell us what you're going to do with it. I have on me um, a box of cards, a deck of playing cards, and inside that box are 52 cards. Um, we're going to fairly get three members of the audience, hence my little ball. You were probably wondering what I was doing with a cheeky little footy up here. And those three people are going to generate a random playing card, and I'm going to demonstrate to you that I know what that playing card will be, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> now, you did do this in the rehearsal, so I'm, I'm trusting you, Phil. <laughs> and so it's important. I think I'll take the ball because I'm going to throw it just to show you. I know, think so. So what we'll do is if, is if yeah. Jaya just throws the ball into the audience, someone will catch it. Whoever that person is will stand up and tell us all their name. Okay. So this is showing that he hasn't pre-prepared anyone unless I'm a really good thrower, which I'm not. <laughs> Oh, everyone avoided the ball. <laughs> oh, not me, not me. <laughs> well done, sir. Your name is. Round of applause. Yes. Please, please stand up. Please stand up. And, and your name is, sir, nice and loud. Francis. Francis, lovely to meet you, sir. Um, here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to ask you, and I'll be very clear about this before I uh, go on, you are only going to think of the denomination of a card, OK? So I'm not interested in a colour, not interested in a suit. So I'm going to ask you to either think clearly of a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, a 9, or a 10, or a picture card, or an ace. But as blokes normally think of ace, you probably wouldn't do that, and the fact that I mentioned it means that it would be a double bluff on my part, but don't let me influence you, okay? <laughs> so nice and loud, not the suit, not the colour, you're thinking of a... 3. A 3. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, here's the deck of cards. Anyway, um, would you just throw that ball over your shoulder, please, and then sit down, Francis. Thank you. And who has that now at the back, please? Thank you very much. Stand up, whoever it is. Your name, sir? Fred. Fred. <laughs> you you uh, used to play for Manly, did you? <laughs> yeah, I apologise about the uh, genre of the footy ball, for those of you who don't follow Manly. I just came across it. So <laughs> what we've uh, arrived at, we've arrived at a three. Um, and you now, sir are going to think of the colour of this three. It's either a red three or a black three. And don't read anything into the fact that I put the word black at the end. <laughs> no, so now is it red or black, sir? Red. A red three. We're getting very fair here, aren't we, guys? Would you throw that ball somewhere else? Wow. <laughs> you have that, sir? Yep. Would you just actually come and join me on stage? Thank you very much. Round of applause for the gentleman. Well done, your name is? Christian. Christian, just come over here for me, sir. Thanks, Christian. Um, now you have the final decision, Christian. This is clearly going to be the three of hearts. Just repeat that for you, the three of hearts. I'll go with diamonds. Or the three of diamonds. <laughs> Can't believe you fell for it. Do you want to change your mind, by the way? No, diamonds are good. OK. Now, this deck of cards is a small deck of cards, but um, I do have my beautiful assistant drawing up what we need here at the back. Um, if I get this wrong, I'm clearly going to uh, not look great. Now, Christian, you need to be the eyes and ears of the audience. Um, they're all different. Yep. And uh, where, uh, where is it? <coughs> yep, come past it. You saw it, did you? Yep. 
There it is. No, it's, I beg your pardon, Naomi, also. Okay, would you just hold that against your chest like this so everyone can see what it is? Now, if you had thought of the Eight of Spades, it would have said boo on the back. If you had thought of the Four of Diamonds, it would have said boo on the back. Indeed, if you thought of the Six of Clubs, it would have said boo. Or any of the cards in the deck, ladies and gentlemen, please have a look, say boo on the back of them. All the cards but one. The Three of Diamonds. You turn it around and show everyone and say what that says. It says go crazy. Thank you very much indeed. The one card. Thank you very much. Well done, sir. I'll have that back. Thank you. You can keep that. Give that to the gentleman. So thanks, Chair. Um, that demonstrates how thinking outside the box rather than inside the box can arrive at um, hopefully what was an impressive result. So thanks for having me. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> When we wrote our book, we worked with a neuroscientist and, um, and he worked especially in creative thinking, Dr. Jason Galati from Sydney University. And it's really interesting to find out how the brain works when you're thinking creatively. When you're not thinking creatively, you tend to develop channels or neurons that become like highways. So all of your thoughts are traveling down the same paths. And those paths are growing bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. Meanwhile, there's all these other neuron pathways that are being ignored. All these other possibilities and opportunities. And if you don't use those other channels, they atrophy. They actually physically die off. So you're left with one way of thinking, a one-way highway, your way. And that's something that keeps you inside the box. <laughs>